Hi, I'm Alejandro Manga, a research associate at WPI and a PhD candidate in urban and regional planning at the Université Gustave Eiffel in Paris, France, and in communication, culture, and media at Drexel University. This is my submission for Cycling Up Trauma. The title of it is Writing with the Advocates Mobility Justice and the Bike Space of LA. First of all, I want to give you a little introduction. Uh, this, is, this work is based on research I did about mobility justice and bike advocacy in Los Angeles. It was field work that was done at UCLA as a visiting graduate researcher in 2018. I've started doing some complementary interviews in 2022 with a different perspective because uh, during uh, the basically four years that have passed since then, I've been learning about uh, communication, culture and media, and uh, this has led me to change the perspective that I have on the work that I was doing in the city at the time. So the first thing that I want to indicate, and I'm not, this is not going to be the emphasis of my presentation, is that four out of the eight advocates that I had interviewed had lost close ones to car-based violence or being subject to it. Their best friend, their big brother when they were a child, their grandfather, or the self. The case of the self and the grandfather, I will cover them a bit further down the line. And the other thing is that um, advocates participating in the LA bike space have different identities with different levels of privilege and different levels of subalternity. I'm going to give you a little, uh, talk a little bit about the methods. So it's mixed methods. I use some JS analysis, but not too much. Uh, some descriptive statistics, but not too much. And now I understand what I was doing. What it's uh, referred by Sarah Tracy as iterative phonetic research in that my research has evolved through time. Uh, the research questions have changed. The way that I see the problem has changed and I've understood the methods that I was using at the time of my research. So I was doing mobile ethnography, I was writing with the advocates, I was doing qualitative in interviews with bike advocates, some of them in person, dialogical in nature. Sometimes we were even having a video while we were having these interviews. And now the complementary interviews that I'm doing, I'm doing through Sue interviews. And because most of the people that I'm talking to are experts on their teams, then they're able to actually interact with me and they show me uh, using planner tools, as you will see in the future, what they mean and how this relates to their personal trauma and the motivations that they have to do the work that they do. Now I'm going to be talking about the context of LA. Before being able to talk about mobility, justice, and bike advocacy in Los Angeles, it's important to understand the urban space of LA, uh, both from a material perspective, but also from what it represents, culturally speaking. Many people have argued that LA embodies the discourses of modernity, the folklore of the freeway. This is also linked to the history of discrimination, of uh, uh, planning in the United States. LA, because of uh, being this city that grew during the 20th century, this American century, also developed what is known in planning circles as the LA school, and such concepts like spatial justice, third space of the postmodern city of Soja come from here. And so this is all intertwined in like this space of the American dream where new technologies, cheap cars, uh, street cars, so we have uh, on the right uh, the, 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 the network of street cars in Los Angeles in 1925, gives the city this dimension, this huge dimension and makes it necessary to use this type of technologies to be able to move in space. And there was also the issue of cheap land. So right now, LA is one of the most expensive cities in the world. But in the early 20th century and in the mid 20th century, land was cheap and available. And this was also one of the main uh, draws that the city had for these industries that came to, to install themselves. Many of them from the industry, uh, linked to the industry, and they grew up during the Second World War. Another concept that is important to understand is the concept of mobility justice. And here I'm using uh, the visuals and definitions given by the Untokening. The Untokening is a movement of black and indigenous people of color. Many of them, if not most of them, come from bike advocacy. And uh, because of uh, they didn't feel included in these white bike spaces, they created a movement of their own. And they started thinking about how identity is important when you're moving about in space. So for instance, the experience of a woman that gets cat called on the street, the experience of a, an undocumented migrant that gets stopped because he doesn't have a driver license, the experience of a person stopped driving while black. 
the, the ability that you have uh, to be able to write safely in cities that have very aggressive car culture. So all of this is important in terms of the ident uh, of uh, the way that you move in space and the options that you have to move around and the barriers of ability that you have. The other thing that I want to say about this slide is that the visuals are very appealing and this is because many of the people uh, participating with the untokening have degrees, advanced degrees in anthropology, in gender studies, in cultural studies. But another objective of the movement is to mediate these concepts and make them accessible to the community organizers of the ground that do not have that type of specialized knowledge. Another concept that I think it's important uh, to understand what I'm going to be saying when I get to the meat of the subject is the concept of representation. Here I'm, I'm drawing from Gayatri Spivak and the speak. And she refers to this uh, German concepts, uh, Vertreten, uh, to speak for, which refers to political participation. And if there is German people in the audience, I uh, excuse myself for my lack of understanding of uh, the German language. And that's telling, which is this concept of representation as in an artistic depiction. Now, in terms of uh, political participation, the questions that I ask myself is who is politically represented, whose voice is heard, whose bodies can participate in the space, using which habitus is the one that you use people is used, uh, the, the people participating in, in space are used to, and who is habituated, who has the, 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 the confidence to be in the space, who has been around people that have power. This is important in terms of political participation. And in terms of uh, uh, how you depict stuff, uh, my question is about how do you depict knowledge, from whose perspective, using what kind of knowledge, and using what kind of tools of, and techniques. And I will illustrate this further down the line. And this question of representation is also linked to uh, how do you represent space? So here, I'm defining the concept of bike space, inspired by uh, Lefebvre produ uh, production of a space, and so just third space, uh, as having three dimensions, one that is conceived and abstract, and can be represented. So this is the conceptual space of planners. You can use GIS analysis, uh, technical drawings, plans, diagrams, like the one that I'm using here. Uh, there is the material lived space of hard infrastructure that requires technical knowledge, the knowledge of engineers and architects, uh, usually requires capital intensive. And then there's perceived symbolic space. Um, I argue that by communities have this sense of um, unimagined communities. All the communities that I have participated with uh, in Bogota, Colombia, in Philadelphia, in Los Angeles, in uh, the greater Geneva area in general, people have this uh, idea of belonging together. There's certainly an attachment to place and of service to communities that you're working with. And this uh, more affective experience about uh, the feeling of uh, the freedom of writing, the sense of belonging, all of this is important in how you represent your space of participation and the space that is occupied by your movement. So now that I've talked a little bit about uh, the concepts uh, that I'm mobilizing in this research, I ask myself, how do we represent mobility in justice and how do we experience it in the bike space of Los Angeles? Part of my fieldwork was writing with the advocates. And uh, so these are, these are things that I start to understand now. I was basically writing with two different groups. One was centered about uh, this. So the Lemley family is one of the biggest uh, um, uh, donators of the League uh, of the Los Angeles Bike Coalition. And they have this annual event called the Tour de Lemley, where you go around the many theaters. They own the biggest independent uh, theater chain in Southern California. And so you go around uh, the greater Los Angeles area, uh, visiting their context and you earn a pair of socks. So to do this, I had to ride uh, for 220 kilometers. Uh, I spent 10 hours riding with this. And I love this experience. This is one of the things that made me love LA, but this requires a cer certain physical aspect, having a certain type of um, bike. It's part of a specific bike culture that is uh, predominant in white cycling spaces in the city of Los Angeles and I are in other parts of the United States too. Whereas the other ride was a ride of remembrance for the victims of the Pulse Massacre. It was led by people from Mobility Justice and we were stopping in different places where uh, members of the queer community uh, of uh, Los Angeles had been subject to violence. So this was a very inclusive ride. It was a short ride. Uh, you had many people with different bodies, different identities. And so it illustrates a little bit the diversity of uh, the bike movement in the city of Los Angeles. And this is a planned representation of these issues of uh, mobility justice. So this is part of my uh, 
Um, I use this uh, GIS uh, web-based application uh, developed by the University of California, Berkeley, to represent uh, car-based violence to cyclists in the city of Los Angeles. And so if we look at the map, this is basically the areas around central Los Angeles where most of the crash happens. This is uh, the area around Hollywood, South LA, which is an area occupied uh, mostly by uh, black people that have been uh, displaced and gentrified. And I'm not talking about gentrification here, but I also covered this topic. And if we look about uh, and race, we will see that it's basically Asian people, so people of Asian descent, people that identify as black and Hispanics, that are most of people getting hit by cars. And then, uh, so blue are people that identify as uh, male. Um, so basically we have young male people of color getting hit by cars. Here's another type of representation. This video was prepared by uh, Arely Morales, who at the time of my field work was uh, working at LACBC. And then she prepared this video for Cal uh, Works. In this video, she reminisces about the death of her grandfather, who was killed by a car in the 90s. Estamos por recordando a mi papá. El abuelo Ambrosio López García falleció cruzando las calles. Estamos por recordando a mi papá. El abuelo Ambrosio López García falleció cruzando las calles de Forest Avenue en Winter Street en su vecindad de East LA. Una motocicleta la venía siguiendo, tenía una persecución de la policía. Entonces la motocicleta lo impactó y lo aventó como un bloque. Y ya murió al instant, instantáneamente. Y la persona, el motociclista también murió, también falleció. Él vino a trabajar aquí de bracero y cuando iba para México, nosotros crecimos en México, hacía, hacíamos con él la limpieza, o sea, al poco tiempo que convivíamos con él fue algo sí, muy hermoso. So, there are many things that uh, I can tell you about this. The first of all is that it's, it's the language is Spanish. And so there is this dimension of uh, language justice and then there's the translation to English. And then what is important here is that uh, this idea of uh, reminiscing, of remembering, of uh, recognizing the harm that was done to the grandfather and not only to the grandfather, but also to the communities of color in greater Los Angeles. This, this interview is part of the complementary interviews that I've been doing uh, for this project. And this is with Monique Lopez, who is the co-founder and owner of Pueblo Planning, which is, from my viewpoint, the, the consulting firm that is doing the best qualitative research work in planning in Southern California. Uh, she's another member of the Untokening. She has, has also participated with uh, Bike Advocacy. And here, she's going to tell us about uh, uh, the deep motivation that she has to do the work that she does nowadays. I grew up, I grew up in a community that um, what others labeled was like an environmental justice community. I didn't even know what that term meant, even though like my body, right? My, my asthmatic lungs knew what that meant. The bodies of my friends and family knew what that meant, what that term meant. And this here is, um, one of uh, one of the first neighborhoods I lived in. Uh, this is a really important corner from like my evolution and understanding in terms of the the importance of being involved in planning spaces um, or just and also not or just the the nature of how planning impacts us day to day. Um, so when I was eight years old, um, crossing this street, I was hit by a car. Um, and uh, across here, because I used to live over here, there's a park. So I was going to the park to play basketball. Um, and, um, you know, there's no four way stop or anything here. Like, there's free, even to this day, there's free flow of traffic and all of that. So, eight years old, hit by a car. Uh, it, I was like in physical therapy for like nine months. I had a little walker that when I was finally able to go back to school, I, uh, um, had to use support from a locker and stuff, but this like, but this corner is also really significant because our family home was right here and it was a little one bedroom home. And there was, there was probably like four or five homes on this like vacant lot area here now. 
uh, it was a home in which my parents uh, owned. Um, and um, but when I was in fifth grade, um, there's a there's a middle school over here. Um, the the it, the middle school or the school district took um, our family's home by eminent domain. So using another planning tool. And so we were displaced from our, our home, um, this one bedroom home right here, which is what they could afford. Um, and all these residents here were low income residents, um, all, all uh, Latino residents. Um, and so, you know, through eminent domain, and so we had to move out of our. So what is important here? First of all, she's mobilizing new ways of uh, new types of techniques to work in planning. And then there's the question both in the Arely's video and in this one, there is this question of recognizing uh, the harm that is done. So there's a question of epistemic justice. There's a question of uh, displacement. There's a question of card based violence. And uh, this is all informing the work that these advocates are doing. It's personal and it comes from the, tra the traumatic experiences that they've had. And from here, we get into uh, uh, policy objectives and political representation. And what I argue here is that depending on your perspective, if your perspective is objective and this subjectivity comes from the knowledge that you're using to find the questions that you're asking. So for instance, um, Mark Caswell, who was the president of the board of LACBC, had his best friend die uh, because of car-based violence. And Mark has a, a degree in urban and regional planning from UCLA and works as a senior planner in alta planning. And so his policy objectives are, if you look at the hierarchy of safety, we can stop speeding pretty fucking quickly. We can do that in a few different ways. Put speed regulators in all cars. We can upgrade all computers firmware. I know your GPS location. I know your speed, all the autonomous cars. We also easier build streets that don't allow for six way, one way traffic where people can gun it. We can create an environment that can reduce the risk. And then on the question of representation and legitimacy. So this is him thinking about how he can do his work as a planner. I like to stop meetings with people who look like the community and are familiar with the needs of those communities. As a professional planning firm, we don't have many of these because the pipeline for having planners is long. I need three or four more people that can speak Cantonese, Mandarin, Spanish, Tagalog, and I need people who understand what's going on. But there are a lot of planning firms who hire those people and then there is a white man planner pulling the strings on the back. And so um, this is one Thing that is, I'm not saying that infrastructure is not important. I'm just saying that the way that you frame solutions to these problems depend on your perspective. On the other one, on the other hand, if you if you your positionality and your perspective is uh, subjective, then you'll be looking. We'll be looking at another another issue. And and what you want is to be legitimate in the spaces, and you do this through knowledge. So here are the policies objectives as uh, stated by Arely Morales, who, who is the person that had her grandfather killed. I want people to be held accountable for their actions. I want to be illegal to run over a person. I want people to be afraid to hit and run because in Los Angeles to hit a person with a car, to murder a person with a car is close to legal. The more you see, it is the easiest way to get away with murder in Los Angeles. And so here's the thing, she's telling us about this question of recognition, and this is the basis for many policies that go for, for instance, reparations. And I have many of my informants talking to me about reparations, but I'm not including that here. And then the, the, when it comes to the question of representation, then the question is of knowledge. And so here we have Adonia Lugo, who at the time was uh, uh, one of the chairs of people for mobility justice. So she's talking about people in her community organization because we have people that don't have planning degrees. So we have people that are not comfortable in those spaces. So you have to get to those spaces where they are presenting transportation spending and it's very technical language, very jargony. If you don't speak the language, if you don't feel qualified to talk to these people, we have these issues of internalized oppressions and I feel it too. You don't feel qualified, you are afraid of speaking up and I feel it too. So what we do in PMJ, when we pay people to go and work with the communities. Me, I have the education to the PhD level. I don't understand what they are saying, but I don't feel intimidated. So when I meet with William, William is this symbol of white privilege. He's a white male in a, in a leadership position that uh, he was also in a frat house. And so in many ways he embodies the trauma of many people of color 
in the United States. And it makes me uncomfortable and I don't want to be there. That, that is holding our organization back because I am the person that can go to those meetings. So there is this question of legitimizing the community leaders through them acquiring these uh, legitimate types of knowledge of planners. And so if I summarize this, the whole thing, what I'm saying here is that if you have a privileged identity and you um, can speak and master this uh, type of language and techniques, then your policy objectives are going to be such as Mark. So you'll be talking, we'll be talking about techno solutionism, about streets designed to reduce speeds, about infrastructure for all. And this is based on the conceived and lived space. And I'm not saying that this is bad. I'm just saying that it's incomplete. And the question of representation and legitimacy is going to be more about how do I get people with these advanced degrees that also are legitimate towards this identity so that they have the body, they have this, they, what you need to legitimize is the body towards government agencies and funding. So here you're le legitimate through your diplomas because you have degrees from fancy schools. And so you need these planners that have the body, that have the language skills. And this is how you get legit, this is how you legitimize your way of doing policy. Whereas if you have a more subaltern identity, uh, your policy objectives are more about accountability, about changing the legal system to protect the vulnerable road users, about the recognition of harm, and, and, and we'll be talking about reparations and epistemic justice. And uh, the, the, the question of legitimacy and representation is about community leaders that can't understand planner speak. And so the legitimation passes through the acquisition of, the, of uh, degrees um, and uh, getting habituated and used to participating in these uh, white spaces, uh, exclusionary spaces that are in transportation and planning spaces. And this is exclusive in an event for experienced organizers. And so to conclude, I just want to say that trauma is the common experience of black advocacy in LA and it fuels their want of social change. That, uh, and then the social change that they want and the policy that they go about and chasing after is based on the perspective that they have and it depends on the knowledge and the body that they inhabit. Some will want mobility justice, some may, may want the infrastructure for all. One type of legitimation happens through knowledge and another one happens through bodies. And the problem with this is that the, when you're participating and working in this context with this historical background of exploitation, this is tricky uh, to highlight. And then there's also these uh, tensions between subalternity and privilege um, and between subjectivity and objectivity. And here, the only thing that I want to say is that it's important to be aware of these tensions and the positionality of a person when doing this type of work to understand how we can do policy differently.